Good morning. How is everyone today? Yay, the sun is out. <laughs> um, we hoping, we're hoping the land dries out a little bit. Um, I'm Julie Edwards, vestry person of the day. Glad you are here today and want to welcome everyone. If it's your first time here uh, and you need the facilities, they are right through that door and back that way. So I um, wanted to let you know that. I uh, also wanted to let you know that we're going to be filling a position on the vestry. If anybody is interested, please let us know. If you know someone you think would be good for that job, please let us know. And um, I wanted to uh, just make sure everyone is welcome. I did want to say that um, on, in pastoral care, which is the team that I lead, um, we, we have several ministries under pastoral care and our fix-it team finally did a job. We have a fix-it team, so if anybody um, needs um, something small done in their house and you can't do it, um, then please let us know. House or, um, or outside, this one was an outside lamppost that needed repair, so it was done. So um, let us know and um, Tracy, is our fix-it person. Tracy is in the choir. So um, uh, we're glad that um, Tracy could go do that. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm Ellen Hall, and I have the great pleasure to announce that Gold Chicken is back. Woohoo! Um, for anybody who doesn't know, Gold Chicken is a musical performance that we do with the um, adults with um, intellectual disabilities community. Everybody's buddied up and we put on this big, huge musical production um, once a year. And so we're starting rehearsals today, right here at Holy Comforter in this space. Um, so I'm telling you about this now because we would love to have more buddies. So if you're interested at all, talk to me or talk to Hillary, because Hillary's part of it. And you should have seen her sing last year. It's awesome. Um, and um, we will rehearse once a month here at Holy Comforter, and then the show will be in November. So you're going to hear lots more about it. But I wanted to put it in your ear just in case you want to come check us out today at 2.30. 2.30. Two thirty. Tuesday night. There's men at the movies night. I'm Steve Van Voorhees, and I wanted to ask you, do you know the difference between a shlemiel and a shlemazel? That's Yiddish, right? And we have at least one shlemiel in this movie and probably two shlemazels and an angel, I might add. The angel's played by Queen Latifah, if you can imagine that. And the uh, two shlemazels are... Holly Hunter and Danny DeVito. Here's the difference. It, here's, the, here's the definition for a shlemiel and a shlemazel. All right? The shlemiel is making a pastrami sandwich. The shlemiel spills the mustard all over everybody, and the shlemazel gets it on them. That's a shlemiel and a shlemazel. In other words, the one who makes the trouble and the one who gets the trouble. Hello, good morning. Good morning. I'm Evan Herr, and uh, Vestry Liaison to Children and Youth, and I wanted to let you know that we will have an Easter egg hunt after the service on Easter Sunday. So <laughs> all ages welcome. But if you would like to participate, bringing a basket would be great. And Easter Sunday is coming up because it's March 31st, so... And on that note, I want to invite all of our scouts who are here watching online to always, you're always welcome anytime. And I want to recognize you all. If the scouts who are here could stand up and wave your hand a little bit. Yeah, there you are. And then, then the leaders, then the leaders, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and um, I'd love to have anyone stand who participated in Girl Scouts. Any? 
Yeah. And me too, I was a brownie for about five minutes. <laughs> and because and all scouting is awesome, how about the Boy Scouts too, or other scouts? Other scouts, yeah. All right, yay. So a couple other announcements. Um, the Lenten program continues this week. It's been super fun. It's not hard. <laughs> it's not overly intense at all. It's a lot of fun with drawing and art and a little drama now even. So I invite you to join us this Wednesday or the next for our final two times. If you know you're coming or even if you think you may be coming, there's a sign up so we can know how much food to provide. So if you could sign up, it'd be great. And that link is on the website and in the bulletin. Um, exploring the Sacred Feminine. The second in our three-part series is today. It is a, it's a Sunday forum happening in the parlor following the service. I heard we had a great turnout. I was unable to go last week. I heard we had a great turnout. So um, I invite those who want to come back or experience this forum for the first time. Men are welcome. All people are welcome, however one identifies. Yes. Uh, I think those are my main things. Am I forgetting something? I, I have, I'm getting to that. Right, okay. But that's all. Yeah. The Easter Vigil is Saturday at 8 p.m. on the 30th. And thanks for bringing that up, Kip Lee. There is a schedule of the Holy Week services in your bulletin. Woohoo! Oh, and that reminds me. So I've decided, it says prayers on Facebook Monday and Tuesday. I'll put something on Facebook, but decided to do a Eucharist those two days as well at 12.15. So it'll be, it'll be low-key, like a Wednesday Eucharist. Um, if you are looking for that, some people love to receive communion throughout Holy Week. So if that is you, this is for you. Or if you're unable to come at some other time. All right, I think that's it. Blessing of the children. Hey, all the kids who are here, let's get together. <laughs> Have a little prayer. Yeah. Children and youth. Children and youth. There you are. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yay, coming up from the back. What have you got there? That's so much fun. Yeah. All right. Let us pray. Thank you, God, so much for the children in our group today and the youth in our church and in our group. Um, we are so thankful for these children. We are so thankful to be together. I pray that they'll always know of our care and your great love for them and how important they are and leaders that they are in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. All right, and if you'd like to go to Children's Chapel, we are doing that, correct? Yes.
We continue on page two of the bulletin with a penitential order. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, first taking a moment of silence to bring to mind any specific things for which we desire healing and or forgiveness. And together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by way of the Red Sea to go to the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? for there is no food and no water, and we detest the miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that now is at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of grace, of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, for we or what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent, serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that anyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe in him, do not believe, are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light comes come into the world and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light 
so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. God of light and love, God of our salvation, fill us with your spirit, guide us in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, 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 where to begin? I could have come out here with a big sign that said, John 316, God so loved the world that God gave God's only son that all may be saved, right? Or shall we begin with the poisonous serpents that God sent to kill people? It's a fun day. <laughs> Seriously, though, I love the numbers reading. It, it's not what you would expect. It's not what you would expect for the process of salvation. Just to look at that a little bit, and it's pretty obvious, right, why it's paired to the gospel the people have been complaining for a long time, and this reading points out particularly that they complain against Moses and God. Didn't you love the part where it said, we don't have any food, and we hate this miserable food? <laughs> I feel like I could say something like that. <laughs> so it's so real. It seems so real that that is how it goes when you're super stressed out and things are happening and... You don't see the way forward. And, you know, back in the day, long ago, people understood things, and people understood that everything that happened was God's will. So if people were dying because snakes were biting them, it was because God wanted that. In the Episcopal Church, we don't believe that. But if you read the story for the story, which it's given to us, um, that's what was happening. And even in that, God sent salvation. God tells Moses to fashion a serpent, a snake, right, and put it on a pole. Now this sounds, and people around Moses were like, what, what are you doing? This doesn't look right at all. Um, but Moses said this is what God wanted. God wants weird stuff sometimes. I mean, why not just let the snake stop biting people or something? But no, um, God was asking in this story for some faith. From Moses first, and then when the snake is fashioned and it's on the pole, people who are bitten can look at the serp serpent bronze snake and be healed and not die. And of course, this is paired with God gave God's son to be raised up. So looking toward the serpent, people find salvation. Looking toward the cross and to Jesus, people find salvation. This is why, right, why they're together. The title of my sermon, it sort of has two titles. One is, Where Do You Find Salvation? And the other is, Where Do You Look for Salvation? Where do you look? Sometimes it helps to think back in your life to when you experienced, and what is salvation? Freedom, love, help when you needed it, um, people just to hold you when you're crying, people to be there for you in a moment, a sense of God's love, being in nature, the salvation of the earth, being our friend, we're friends with the earth, right? The earth loves to be there for us. So maybe just take a moment and think back. And looking back, we might say, oh yeah, God was all over that. I felt free, I felt helped, I felt saved in that moment. Hmm. 
When I was in college, people would come up to me and say, are you saved? That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> it is and it isn't. It is and it isn't. So where are we looking for salvation? Let's think about all the places one could look that aren't so great, but you understand it, right? You understand why you or your family or people you know look to things that ease the pain, you know, be it alcohol or drugs or any sort of thing. It's, it's very understandable. Um, and then, and anyone who's had an addiction, and some would say we've all been addicted, right, to something, even seeing a little bit of light at the end of that tunnel is salvation, right? Salvation doesn't always happen all at once, right? Or if ever, it's a process trusting. The other big point of this reading is the grace that just is given, that we don't earn at all, and also from the epistle. Mm. There's grace in being here today. There's grace in welcoming our Girl Scouts, and I'm coming to you all in a second with something. <laughs> um, it's interesting, too, that today, March 10th, is the day that Harriet Tubman died in 1913. Because many of you will know she was referred to as Moses because she led her people to freedom and salvation. So there's a, a wonderful example of a person who helped so many find salvation. And you, you help people find it as well, even when we don't know it. That's one of the great things about God working through us and grace. It can happen when you least expect it. In fact, you know, you might have passed somebody and smiled at them yesterday. They were having the worst day of their life. And your smile and your energy of care might have really helped. Probably did. People, helping people, brings me to Girl Scout stuff. Um, I had to refresh myself and realize that scouting makes a big deal about faith. And not one faith, all faiths. And Girl Scouts come to Girl Scouting from many, many, many different backgrounds and the diversity is what's so awesome. But like any group, like us too, there are things that they covenant with, basically agree to be about. I would like to read to you the Girl Scout promise. On my honor, I will try to serve God in my country. Yeah, if you guys want to say with me. To help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. And let's hear what the Girl Scout law is. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Amen. And they learn it, I'm told. I know they do their saying it here. <laughs> I think I'll really end there. I mean, I could go on and on about the poisonous snakes, but I think that's probably good <laughs> for today. <laughs> let, let me have a little prayer to end. Okay, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for scouting, and today especially for Girl Scouts for all those who participate and the families that support and the leaders that lead. We thank you that they are an example to us of grace in action, the hope they give us that the world can be a better place. And we thank you for your great love in giving us ways to experience salvation, giving us places and especially Jesus to look to for salvation. Help us as we learn more and more what that can mean in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
please join me in reciting the Nicene Creed, which can be found on page four. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from all distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That life perpetual shine upon them. We pray for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Francis, Great Falls, and St. George's Fredericksburg. We pray for our Bishop, Michael Curry, and our Bishops, Michael, Mark Stevenson and Gail Harris. We pray for our parish clergy, Hillary, Joe, Bridget, Heather, Frank, and Bradley, and for our seminarian, Lucius. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Nan and Julie, and Casey and Mary. For healing in our parish, Joan, Fred, Sheila, Carleen, Mark, Gail, Marie, the Hawes family, Bonnie, and Barbara. We pray for all who have died, especially Andrew Verasco, grandfather of Vera Lim. We pray for Vera, her family, and all who are grieving. I invite your prayers silently or aloud. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people 
in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also And if you have a birthday or anniversary, you could start making your way to the front. (laughs) Hey, peace. Peace, peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Caroline. Is it your birthday this week? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's awesome. Birthdays, anniversary, if you have one and like to come forward, you can right now. Caroline's birthday is tomorrow. Ooh, very fun. <laughs> Let us pray. We thank you, God, so much for Caroline, for the anniversary of her birth. May she know you more and more. May this year be filled with a sense of your love and your joy. In every way, may she be blessed. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us.
We continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, expansive version found in your bulletin. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children, through Jesus Christ our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 
As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray to God, who is our divine parent, our mother, our father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived and died for you and welcome him into your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
I invite you to join me in our post-communion prayer found on page seven in your bulletin. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Blessed wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, Take heart, it is I, be not afraid. You are called, you are blessed, in both your ups and downs you always belong to God. Go now in peace, go trusting that good news, and the blessing of our loving God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Comforter be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.